Hi, my name is Jamie Kinsley. I'm going to talk about two different cemeteries in York County. This is part one, the Wilderson Cemetery. The title of this presentation is called How We Bury Our Loved Ones and the Unloved. I will consider who has the right to a written death. I'll look at ethnicity, gender, and class. And I'll examine their stone epitaphs or lack thereof, looking for clues of the people and community who lived there hundreds of years ago. My primary method is reading the tombstone, just like you would read a book or a piece of text. I will look at tombstones and read them trying to draw meaning. So for example, here is the top of one of the tombstones in the Wilderson Cemetery. There at the very top of it, you can see there is a weeping willow. A weeping willow is a sign of grief. So we can tell this was a loved one, someone cared very deeply for this person, for them to sketch something into their stone to symbolize for the rest of the world that they were grieving their loved one. So the Wilderson Cemetery, a little bit of history, uh, it was originally a meeting place. So it's in Cadora State Park, which is in the southern eastern part of New York County. It was previously used as the family's graveyard, and in 1941, they constructed this building to be used as a public school and house of worship. It is open to the public. You can go check it out. Um, it is beautiful inside. I highly recommend it. So when I visited the Wilderson Cemetery, we look at both the material culture and the non-material culture. Material culture are the tangible artifacts that you could like metaphorically put in a time capsule. So something that you can hold with your hand. So a baseball, for example, or the gravestones would be material culture. What we do is we look at those material cultures, trying to understand then non-material culture. Those are the value systems or religion or music that you couldn't necessarily put in a time capsule. When we study history then, we try to understand the people that live there. So considering I can't ask the people buried in the Wilderson Cemetery about their beliefs or ideas or personalities, I turn to the gravestones, and that is what we try to read to better understand their material culture. So let's dive into our first example here. Here are the um, graves of Clara L. Hess and Jacob L. Hess. They are buried side by side, replicating how they stood when they were married. When we look at the stones, we can tell their birth date, their age of death, and their familial relations. We can also, though, specifically look at how gender was viewed in York County 150 years ago. So we can denote a sense of equality when we look at Clara and Jacob. So for example, what are the things that you see that says that they were valued as similar partners? One would be the size of their tombstone, the position and the direction that they're both facing. The material is identical, same with the iconography that's on the top, the images of the symbols that they sketched into it. But we also see some inequalities between Clara and Jacob. There are some differences. One would be on Clara's tombstone, it doesn't have a last name. It just says Clara L. So if anything were to happen to Jacob Stone, we wouldn't be able to identify her. Under her name, it says his wife. His does not have her husband underneath it. And so we can tell that women during this time period were valued more in their relation to others in their life, whether they were a daughter or a wife or a mother, um, whereas men develop their own senses of identity could stand independently of women. We can also look at the stones as an art form. So this is a stone um, that you can see there is from 1809, so it's over 200 years old. This carver that um, went into the stone to make those sim uh, symbols there, they used a chisel. And stone cutters would have taken a lot of time to create these tiny soft blows several times over to refine the cut as much as possible. And this was their style they left behind. It was their art. A little bit closer there, you can see the five pinwheel at the top, and then they changed it to six pinwheels in the center. D-O-D presumably means date of death. So when we look at stones, we can not only tell about the people that were buried there, but then also the artists who created these stones for us to look at hundreds of years later. We can also then, jumping out of gender and jumping into now ethnicity, tell that there were Germans that lived here. The tombstone there is written German, so we can see the ancestry and the immigration of the time period. Specifically, when we look at German stones, they uh, would use different images as a public statement of the ones that they left behind. So they would frequently use hearts or angels, stars, rosettes, and tulips, typo, tulips there. And that's an example of a rosette. We often see this art form in Frachter which is very popular amongst the Pennsylvania Germans. 
They use this beautiful imagery there to create birth certificates, baptism, marriage, and death certificates. And this is very unique to the culture in our specific area here in York County. The Wilderson Cemetery is also an art gallery. So we see these stylistic variations of the individuals, the anthology of the community's identity, and they serve as both a personal and social document. Jumping into another example, here is another stone that's from 1793. You can see stars there, which was a symbol of the pride that one felt in each country. There's also this hole that's carved into it, and it symbolizes eternity that has no beginning and no end. It's almost an invitation to touch it because it stands out so much compared to the other gravestones. And I have to think when I look at this, how long did other people who were there visiting their family stare at this exact same image, the one that we're looking at right now, but they felt a lot of different feelings because it was presumably a loved one that has passed. We can also look at class. So there is some socioeconomic status that we can denote. So Pennsylvania Germans, looking at here, um, when they first came to Pennsylvania, they couldn't afford tombstones. And so oftentimes there will be people who are buried in farmer's fields that have no identification. There are still some identified bodies in York County. Eventually in the 1700s, they could afford slate uh, stones there, and that's what we're looking at right now. And eventually they did change to limestone and marble, which we'll get to in a second. But if you look at this very closely, if you have any uh, German background, you can see that there is a, there's a typo, there's a spelling error. So Simon Bronner, he is a very famous folklorist in our area. He also studies Pennsylvania Dutch. He believes that this gravestone was carved by a Pennsylvania German who was not very literate. Now you can see the typo, which uh, in English means here rests, which again, uh, we can look at class and the um, socioeconomic status of the people that lived here. In this specific gravestone, or in this uh, cemetery, we have two different identities, the Pennsylvania German and the English and Scots-Irish. So most of the people buried there are from German descent, and there technically are no burial records of people from Scots-Irish lineage, but the change from a German to English, we can tell that there was definitely a presence and influence of them. We also see some other changes in the, the specific cemetery. So just like I showed you the tombstone that was made out of slate, this is now one that's going to change to white marble or limestone. This occurred in the late 1700s. Stone cutters deviated from the gray scale, the gray slate, to go more towards a red sandstone and became also a lot taller and a lot thinner. Many people who study gravestones believe that this is symbolic of the idea that they had to prove that they were worthy in death. So their tombstone was like a certificate. It was white, it was vertical, it was articulate with more lettering and embellishments. And they also look at this as a whitening that could be seen as a form of home decor and ceramic tablecloths and paint colors that people used at the time period. You can see the big difference here from this um, stone that's on the screen now compared to the one made out of slate. The switch from the small slate to the large limestone headstones show the upward social mobility of the Pennsylvania Germans. So before I leave you, I just want to give you this quick clause that I went in and I read the cemetery and tried to denote meaning from it, but I don't want to oversimplify the individuals into one homogenous group. Anytime we overgeneralize people, it can lead to stereotyping. And so it's dangerous to tell a single story here. I am just jumping into a tiny area. It's way more complex than what I just reviewed with you. We can tell a lot from the gravestones, but we can never get the full story of the human beings that live there. If you want to know more, check me out on Wondering in York or Witnessing York. Uh, Again, this is Jamie Kinsley. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.